Um, hey, so uh, I'm Deluke H, uh, and in this call we have Fish. Hi. And also Sushi. Yes, hello, Taskman here. Uh, good to hear. <laughs> Taskman. Yeah. Um, so we're going to be showing off the D side tasks. Uh, just before we jump in, we're actually going to explain a couple of tech. Um, so I'm assuming most people already know uh, kind of some of the tech involved in, you know, Celeste, like hypering, corner boosting, demo dashes. Uh, but we're going to explain a couple of the kind of tasks only tech. Uh, just because, and especially the ones that are used a bunch in the D-sides. Um, so the first one I want to point out is this thing I want to call, I guess, Boosted War Jumps. I'm not actually sure we have a name for them. Um, that sounds good to me. Yeah, sounds good. So, just really quickly, on the left here, you can see uh, Court's Less Studio. This is where we write the TAS inputs. Uh, down the bottom, you want to pay attention to these numbers, in particular the speed. So, the left number here uh, is basically... Uh, if you look speed, the 0.00, .00 that's basically how fast horizontally you're moving. Uh, obviously, higher you are, the better. So, um, so what is a boost of war jumps? Well, basically, when you're on a moving block like this, um, and it's moving in a direction, uh, you can see I'm just frame stepping at the moment. Uh, you can, you, what will usually happen is you'll do a jump to the right. So you can see there that we just did a jump to the right, and we have 380 speed. So bit faster than the Hyper, a Hyper is 325, but still we can definitely do better if we're TAS. So you can see that we maintain the speed like that and we go flying over here. Uh, so let's try instead of doing a right jump, let's do a uh, neutral jump. Um, so grab neutral there. So we do the same thing, uh, we just wait a second to grab on. Then if we do one neutral jump, we only have 250 speed. However, we can still do another jump in a row. So if we do a second jump, we now have 489. And finally, we can do a third jump, and we now have 728 speed. Um, so basically, by doing these repeated jumps, uh, neutral jumps in a row, we can gain insane speed at the cost of stamina. Uh, the other thing about this is uh, we basically can... Uh, when we do this final neutral jump, we can't actually press right. So if I press right in this frame, you'll see our speed rapidly drop to zero uh, in the next frame. Yep, suddenly go, well, not to zero, 125. But yeah, so unfortunately, by doing this final neutral jump, we have to hold neutral, so not uh, conserving our speed that well for about 12 or 11 frames. I'm not actually sure what it is. Uh, but instead, we can actually do a left uh, jump. So kind of like... I guess you want to call it, I don't know, a reverse corner boost or something. Uh, but basically, it costs us a bit more speed than just doing a neutral jump, but allows us to immediately hold right. So you can see here, 489, we only have 688 this time, but we can hold right and coast over this. So the TAS is going to do this a bunch, uh, especially because this is like not really something you can do as a human. So uh, Name Guy, when creating the D-sides, didn't really think about it. Uh, and it's a really good way to build up a lot of speed really quickly. Um, yeah. It's basically, if you know about like task water boosting, it's basically that, but using a moving block, like pushing into you and yeah. just repeatedly corner boosting up. Yeah, that's basically you get a bunch it. Of speed. Yeah, you get an insane amount of speed. Um, so the final thing oh, that I want to point out is uh, I'm going to call this stamina less climbing. Um, so let's, uh, we're over here now, so, oh, whoops, I should do a frame, but we're about to do a neutral jump. So you can see here we've done a jump without any directional inputs, uh, and then, I don't know why that sound's continuing, that's really frustrating. <laughs> uh, but you can see here that we basically do neutral jump and we're slowly losing speed, uh, and that's kind of the default way for humans to do, uh, not consume stamina while climbing. Whereas, as a task, what we can do instead is... Let me just... Sorry. Let me just fix this noise, which is really annoying. Okay. Cool. We can instead... What we can do is we can do a jump up. And you can see there, in the bottom left, there's a stamina, which is now uh, being consumed. It was 107 before. Uh, so we do a climb for a bit. Then what we can do is turn in the opposite direction from the wall. So we start going left. Uh, now and suddenly we get all the stamina back um, so what the game does 
is it gives you a buffer when you do neutral jump to press a direction and when you press a direction it decides then to either refund your stamina or to properly consume it. Uh, so what we're doing here is we're basically doing like a good climb up uh, and then we turn in the opposite direction and then immediately we do a neutral jump. So here we do another neutral jump which refreshes our like height we're jumping from. And you can see here we're next to a wall. So what we can do here is we can also do another jump climb and which essentially gets up here. So instead of having to do neutrals to get up there, we can actually save stamina. So the TAS uh, is actually going to do this a bunch, mainly because Name Guy also really likes stamina puzzles and being able to do this breaks a lot of stamina puzzles. So it makes us go fast. So yeah, I think that's about it. Um, do you have anything else you want to say? Nope. Okay, great. Uh, I'm, I'm, I got nothing. You got nothing? Okay, cool. So let's uh, quickly... Oh, should we explain? We should probably explain what the D sides are. Yeah, start... that sounds pretty that good. That sounds like a good idea. <laughs> Let me just quickly uh, close up some things. Um, do you mind quickly explaining, Fish? Uh, yeah, I know more or less. Okay, so the D-sides, um, they were made by Name Guy. I think just Name Guy. I don't know if anyone helped them. Yeah, I think it's just Name Guy. Correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah, basically, they're supposed to be like the B or C sides, like more difficult remixes of the original level. But D side takes it to the extreme, and they're all pretty long and all really challenging, like more challenging than anything you would find in a base game. So it is kind of still a work in progress. Like some levels are still being reworked, or like I guess balance changes, if you could call them that. <laughs> but still made tasks for it. We did it anyway. So. Yeah. Yeah, this test, um, I think has been in the works for probably about six or seven months now. Um, I started in about end of November last year, just mainly because there was a level or a trick in one of the D-sides which really pissed me off, and so I wanted to figure out exactly uh, how you could do it consistently. So I was like, oh, let's just write a test to figure out what the frame windows are, and from there, kind of just continued on. Um, and yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, basically... Um, Huge thanks to Fish and E-Universe. Um, both of them have contributed levels and also some strats, uh, which has been really useful. So, yeah, um, let's get started. Unfortunately, can't be named to Nango or anything. Sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, hopefully this will just work. I think it should. Uh, let's get started. Yeah, I'm excited to watch this. I am really excited. Okay, let's go. So we're immediately going to see one of those boosted wall jumps uh, that's going to let us skip most <coughs> of this info section. Um, we then yeah, that, mo that moving block that's supposed to troll us, we can actually use to just boost across this entire level. Yeah, which is pretty <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So pretty straightforward uh, prologue. I think that's about like the block saves about twenty seconds at the start by doing that. So. Cool, and now we go into city. Um, so we don't need to really see what we're doing, we can just avoid it. Uh, and yeah, a lot of these are just using the ziplock momentums to kind of continue. Also doing a bunch of spike jumps here, uh, mandatory spike jumps as well. So, so that's another one of those boosted uh, ward jumps or boosted jumps or whatever. Oh my god. Oh Jesus Christ. <laughs> what have you guys done? <laughs> Isn't that, um, wall jump up to that traffic block there, isn't that, like, super precise? Yeah, it is. <laughs> I require, yeah, I, I recall that being, like, super stupid, actually. Yeah. It, some of this stuff has been really bad. Yeah, um, EUni made, uh, this city task. I think I fixed up a couple of screens that got desynced, because, as we said, Name Guy likes to change his levels, which makes sense. They're still a work in progress. Uh, so quite a few of these screens have got minor changes to kind of work. Uh, here's the big... Oh boy. <laughs> this is so yeah. silly. Oh my god. Get a tiny bit of momentum oh, there. <laughs> I think I've actually seen this level one. Uh, this is the eat room. That yeah, that stuff. was the eat room, oh, yes. Of course it is. <laughs> oh, those corner rooms, so lovely. But yeah, like all the other um, <laughs> B and C, or all the other B sides, it ends with a heart room with all the cassette blocks, and a lot of them are huge stamina puzzles. So those yeah. are fun. To 
The other thing is, uh, he really likes to troll you with the hearts by making it uh, very possible to die collecting them. Uh, we'll see that occur in a couple of the other levels as well, so... Oh yeah, this is a level I worked on a bit. This is... I was just like looking for a random level of task and I was like, hey, I like 2D, so... About half of this is mine. Unfortunately, I lost some of the inputs, but... Yeah. Shout out to Bob's Drop right there. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's so oh, we're not at the room yet. Yeah. Yeah, this Bob's Drop, that's like the only way we could find to break that room and it saves like 10 seconds probably. Same, sweet, same. There's a really Whoa. sick diagonal you can do there to collect all the coins. Shout out to Fish for finding that. What is this room? Oh my god. <laughs> oh shit. Don't need the coins. Pretty much. Yeah, in this room, you're supposed to actually take screen transitions to refresh your dashes. Like, you <laughs> yeah, it, let's just not do those. Oh yeah, so this one is one of the worst stamina puzzles, uh, but fortunately, we can just cheese most of it, so... And then this bit's really inconsistent to do normally, but as a task, you can just, like, jump the entire way. So one thing to mention in these cassette rooms is that every time you dash, you save kind of free frames, I think, because the... Block timer basically continues while you're in the dash, while the speedrun clock doesn't. Uh, so we like to dash a lot if we can. Uh, we also get a lot of jumps off the actual uh, block notes, so... Yeah, jumping as they appear gives you a little vertical boost, which yeah. is handy. Yeah. It's also, like, just a fun thing to do while we wait for the cyclist yeah. to finish up. Yeah, we actually had a wait there, so... Yeah. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Alright, so 3D is uh, one of the guess, least fun to do casually, just a lot of cycles, a lot of dust bunnies, uh, doesn't really change anything, and there's some very interesting Oshiria section uh, going to come up. Oh, this cool. also is... That, that's a complete screen. <laughs> yeah. This is also probably one of the least optimized ones. I think uh, beforehand was 8D, but uh, Fish and I had a good go at it over the last week. Saved about yeah, we saved seconds. like 40 seconds or yeah, something. Yeah, that was pretty ridiculous. insane. <laughs> uh, yeah. But this one definitely, like, I think still has some room for improvement, uh, especially some of the later bits. Yeah, and there's a bunch of cycles that if you could figure out how to skip would actually save, like, multiple yeah. seconds. The gimmick for this level is pretty cool, the expanding dust bunnies. I do like them. Yeah. Whoa. Okay, that's... <laughs> wow. There, yeah, there's some really cool dust bunny sections here where essentially, uh, like this one right here, where there's very unique patterns of them that you have to work around. Fortunately, some cycles you have to wait, but you could also just demo dash through some of them, which are nice. Should we explain demo dashes? Uh, I'm just going to assume people know we can dash through spikes or dust bunnies or anything just with, you know, small hitbox, so... Yeah, if crouch hitbox can fit through them, we can go through it. Yeah. Uh, there's going to be a lot of demos in this because, obviously, being a hard version of the game, there's a lot of spikes, so... Easiest way is to not go around the spikes, but just go through them. Also, Name Guy did occasionally make it, like, with the way he lined up spikes, it is impossible to demo in some yeah. areas. So <laughs> Fix some of these it, early levels, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes if you're thinking like, oh, why didn't we demo there? Sometimes the answer is we just couldn't. Like, there's just not enough yeah. room for us. There's a notorious one in 5D where you can skip the entire, well, you would be able to skip the entire cassette room puzzle, except you can't, oh, yeah, the spikes like, can't be demoed. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually really working on that a while too, trying to get enough speed just to go through those spikes. Oh yeah, it's really yeah. hard I feel. Okay, and for some reason there's feathers in uh, 3D, don't ask me why really, but uh, yeah, basically they exist. Name guy, explain yourself. Yeah, name guy, please explain yourself. Yeah, so a lot of these favor rooms are just about going straight as possible to the end destination uh, and just avoid the spikes. Uh, lots of issues, is pretty cool. And then this room, yeah, people just cheese the heart. Like, you don't actually need to do the room, you can just go directly to it, so... <coughs> just that heart room. Oh! Heart room. Oh, okay. uh, that's a lot of issues. <laughs> that is a lot of issues, yeah. I guess that's a little worth mentioning. With Oshiro, you want to try to not 
be like in front of him or near him because yeah. it slows down a game, which loses a ton of in-game time. Yeah. Cool. So we're up to Ridge. Uh, Ridge is pretty fun. Um, there's a couple of um, base. A couple. I mean, a few auto scrollers here. Uh, so we're gonna. Unfortunately, I'll explain what, like, there are very few rooms for optimization in him. So here's one. Uh, the main optimization is to not move it left and right as, like, move it as left and right as little as possible. Because um, each time you do, you lose, like, I don't know, one third of a frame going upwards, which costs you a few frames in the end. So. Whenever you move those vertical blocks, they slow down the tiny bit. Exactly. Oh, yeah, and the main gimmick for, I guess it's not really the main gimmick, but one yeah, of the gimmicks in this level is just being not you just can't see yeah so you can't. <laughs> hopefully the bit rate's high enough that you can make out stuff uh i should have probably put it up <laughs> it's fine it's yeah, fine it's like there, there is no bit rate that can handle this yeah. don't worry yikes oh uh, we also oh, demo under a trigger there for the snow so it doesn't appear like you may have snow through that entire screen but we kind of miss one of the triggers so uh which is pretty great here's the <laughs> longest auto scroller uh Uh, yeah, it's basically just us auto scrolling, trying to move it as least as possible. Uh, but we can skip the end using a really good corner boost, so it's pretty nice. Damn. Dread corner. Yeah, dread corner. Do you have a uh, exclamation name guy command yet? Mm, don't think so. Yeah, you actually have to do like a demo hyper into that corner boost, so you have a demo, uh, like a crouch hitbox, otherwise you hit into the spikes at the top, so it's pretty, uh, quite precise for what it actually is. Um, yeah, more Water Scholars, there's another one. Oh no, there's one more left in the level. Then there's Snowball Water Scholars, which have a unique name guy creation. That's actually pretty good. This is like, I want to be the Madeline. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> actually pretty <laughs> appropriate. Yeah, so we actually get a few Ultras to skip a couple of Snowballs there that you usually have to take. But unfortunately, we still have to wait for one there. Uh, and this room is pretty bad. There's a lot of snowball cycles that you just have to wait for, unfortunately. Yeah, 4D has a lot of auto scrollers. Yeah, it would be a quick chapter otherwise. So we can completely skip the snowballs in that room, by the way. Uh, this one, we unfortunately need one up here. I'm very sorry about the bit rate, guys. I can't really do anything about it. <laughs> I think uh, it's like... fine. Well, I don't think so. Switch can do anything about it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't think there's anything I could actually do. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is what it's supposed to look like. Yeah. So. This is yeah. The whole point pretty is pretty to much, yeah. reduce visibility. So, uh, there's feathers in chapter four as well. I think David just really likes feathers. I think there's one in every single chapter except for one and two. So. Yeah, I think so, actually. Because there's definitely one in 5, there's definitely yeah, 5D one in 8. Yeah, 5D has a couple. I don't know yeah. if we actually use them in 5D, but it does have them. I don't think we do, yeah. Spoiler. Um, we also skip the end of this auto scroll as well, uh, just by doing some hypers and corner boosts. And in this room, we're going to dash, you can see there, to save a couple of frames. Then you're meant to get inside these weird contraptions and wait a bit, but we're just going to jump on them a bunch and do some corner boosts. Uh, to kind of go through it all. Uh, and yeah, that's basically 4D, so... And we actually had to wall jump there, or else we would have died to the spikes at yeah. the bottom. <laughs> pretty nutty. Yeah, humans can time their dashes and like wait a bit between them and not move that fast in order to not have to wall bounce, but uh, obviously for TAS it's like pretty straightforward. Alright, okay, 5D. So Fish uh, did a really good improvement to the uh, Fio section. So yeah, mostly the second half of the level I worried about. Yeah. So. <laughs> the chapter complete screen too. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually never saw that before, it's pretty funny. <laughs> All the chapter complete screens I believe have easter eggs, so feel free to check them out. Yeah, the main uh, gimmick for a lot of the start of this level is red bubbles, and there's actually a pretty long cooldown before you can dash out of them. Mm. So sometimes we have to take a huge path on a bubble because we couldn't immediately dash out of a bubble. It's kind of hard to explain what I mean, but if it looks like we're sitting in a bubble for a super long time, it might be just because we're trapped. Yeah. So. The other annoying thing is that the bubble heights don't line up so you can't demo dash out of them, uh, which means that there's a lot of spikes we 
just can't demo that shadow just because the heights are different. Yeah, here we have to grab some keys to complete a puzzle. Yeah. Have to go backtrack through the room we went through earlier with a key. Fortunately, no key skip found here, so... Yeah. Just, uh, like, this may look pretty straightforward. A lot of these were actually cheesing the puzzle. Um, oh, yeah. shit. Oh shit. Yeah, ignore that notification. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Just so I'd pin me on hey now, so. Yeah. But like there with that bubble, like we had to go up all the way. That's because yeah. we can dash immediately out of the bubble. And here with some precise diagonal dashes, you can actually skip having to wait for the cycle a bit. It's pretty tight actually. Yeah. But it saves like a solid second of having to wait. It's ridiculous. And here we just kind of use the secret boost to get there. Um, and in the next room is one of the cooler skips. Uh, yeah, so we gain a crap ton of speed and then just basically <laughs> go through the whole thing. So um, the rate, the old task rat was to do a lake skip into the end, but uh, obviously we don't need to. Nice. <laughs> go ahead. But yeah, so that was a really interesting mechanic where the Seekers don't really have hitboxes when they they hit a wall, and so you're able to like bounce off them, uh, and using a bubble we can bounce off at a weird angle. So. How long did it take Cast to figure out how to do that bubble? <laughs> <laughs> uh, a tiny bit. Okay. Yeah, I think the answer is yes. <laughs> yes. Alright, here comes Theo's section. Theo's um, pretty great. Oh boy. Theo is dumb. I've seen this oh. before. <laughs> I haven't, and I'm excited and slightly scared. Yeah, basically the main thing you can do with Theo is you can do a grounded ultra, and then if you pick him up, you like basically get put back in a state where you can jump and like not lose your momentum. Um, yeah, getting pushed by that block it saves a buttload of time compared to the ultra, which is pretty cool. Are you sure about this test? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's some texts. I think we get to see a bunch of them because they're all in Auto Scholars. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, we just... skip a lot of the auto scrollers. Like here, we can demo here and just take Theo through this auto scroller. Oh, it has this walking. Yeah, I know. Never thought I'd see that. What the fuck was that move? Holy shit! Yeah, so this strategy is awesome. Uh, we uh -huh. go zooming through the screen and just go through the spikes, maintaining our speed into this room, allowing us to skip that entire puzzle, which is really good. Uh, I think that's the most speed we get. So. We save a cycle on a cassette blocks here. And do grab it all. We have to dash to like pause the cassette blocks. That's but we also need there. to like control Theo, so it's a weird balance we had to make. And we fling ourselves into the heart. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh 5D, so. Sub four. <laughs> Sub four, yeah. Which is actually, I think it was like this. a four thirteen to begin with or something, so that's a lot of time saved on that. Okay, that so 60. <laughs> 60 uh, is, yeah, basically what you would imagine. Uh, it's a really, I actually really like this chapter casually. Um, like, the battle line fight is pretty fun, there's some really inventive screens there. Um, this star section is so-so, but... Better than the start of 6A. That's true, yeah. There's less feathers, so you know. So we just do some demo dashes for all that section. Um, so in this next screen, I managed to find a way to like skip having to wait for this, which was really awesome. We're also going to get an insane boost off this cavern block, doing what I talked about before, the boosted jump. Uh, that allows us to kind of zoom through those couple of next screens. <laughs> It's great too, because if you just go fast enough, eventually you can just fly through spikes. Yeah. So. You don't need to worry about spikes oh, anymore. Oh, 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 okay. <laughs> yeah, so at the bottom of these screens is water, which is great, because we do just get water boosts off them. Um, I think Name Ray should put more water into his maps at the bottom of the screen, so... Everyone should, really. Everyone should, yeah. I feel like you guys are a bit biased on that. <laughs> Perhaps.
Yeah, so I'm the dashes at the start are to like actually kill our momentum, because um, otherwise it will, uh, you know, may it'll make us go into the spikes on the next screen. Uh, this puzzle was really frustrating to task. Like, I don't think there's any good way to do it. Even for humans, it sucks. So. Okay, now we do Badalyn. Uh, Badalyn is really frustrating to task because you, like, it has a bunch of random desyncs. Uh, and it yeah, also this is task very slow. Was desyncing for me, actually. So. Yeah, so hopefully, hopefully nothing bad happens. Uh, there's one screen in particular which I'm pretty sure is where the main desync happens if you fast forward for it, but I've watched this a couple times on regular, so it shouldn't work. Uh, yeah, that demo saves us waiting for that fin on the left to stop going down. You can kind of yeah, see it's it's still going. going. <laughs> <laughs> saves a bit of time. Okay, so this is the Monka S screen. Okay, we got for it. Let's go. I so I think what happens is like due to some timing differences, the fireball fires slightly different. Blast. So and that just makes the desync happen. Yeah, I was scared of. 6D desyncing, and I was also scared of flying through the spikes in 5D desyncing, because <laughs> oh, yeah. really dumb mechanics behind that. Really, really dumb. <laughs> AK, like, actually RNG. Oh yeah. yeah, you don't have to fight battle on there, you can just fly through there, see ya. Yeah. <laughs> a few of these screens have battle line more as like a, I guess a sentry turret than actually someone you fight. Uh, and then there's a few of these like random long rooms which we just like hyper a lot on, try to avoid these bumpers. Uh, volume warning. I right, hope you enjoyed ears. that screen. Yep. <laughs> these are really cool screens. Like these are basically like one on one oh. fight arenas with battle line, which is pretty awesome. So. The sniper here. Yeah. A few corner boosts off that end. More corner boosts. Uh, obviously, with all these like bumpy terrain, it's pretty straightforward to get these corner boosts. So, shout out to clouds and reflection. <laughs> Are we at the center of the earth yet? Uh, close. Yet. We're about to. We're, we're close. We're all right. very close. Shout out to Nengai moving that battle light further away, causing it DC. But I then found that strat on the next screen, bouncing off that bubble, so it saved a bit, a bit of time. Oh, there's going to be a mega shout out to the camera locking on battle line, or at the end of screens, causing us to not be able to like gain enough speed for the next one. Uh, this is a cool strat. Uh, when you hop into feathers, they slowly, like they rapidly decelerate you, so you're able to Basically, uh, if you have a lot of speed, you can move really far in the feather, like, you know, beginning period, startup phase. Oh man, that's super close to dying. Oh yeah. <laughs> Isn't that just at every Celeste has in general? Yeah. Yeah, so this screen at the end, we could get an insane boost off the block. Uh, unfortunately, the camera locks, so you can kind of see it lock there, so. Yeah, we couldn't keep our speed. Yeah, it's, it's also worth mentioning, um, we're kind of on core mechanics where we don't get a dash back. Oh, the zone that's a really four. good point, yeah. I forgot about that, actually. <laughs> you can kind of tell it looks very core-ish at the moment, so yeah, we're actually on core mechanics, so... Uh, this is a huge auto-scroller where the only thing you can really do is, like, at the end, hit her quickly enough. Um, and yeah, we're nearing the end. Wait. Some nice skips there to avoid having to like wait for all the blocks to move away, so... Uh, this room has a really cool mechanic. It also, uh, due to spikes mechanics, you can just get pushed by it, uh, which is kind of neat. Yeah, and then yeah. Moving away the time. And we just kind of cheese this battle and fight. You're meant to hit her like eight times or something ridiculous, but we just kind of like avoid that uh, and grab the heart. Just climb up the ice. It doesn't hurt that bad. <laughs> yeah, it's not that bad. We also had that weird sound going on. Okay, hey, so yeah. oh yeah, <laughs> so we're about to enter Summit. Uh. So Summit is uh, a pretty insanely long chapter. Uh, like by far, I think the longest single like chapter IL of any Celeste ass. So 
yeah, it's a long screens, a lot of demo dashing, a lot of just really precise maneuvers, so enjoy. Um, Did you mention this uh, level was reworked recently? Or? Oh, that's a good point, yeah. So there used to be an old 7D, uh, which was kind of janky. Like, it was really fun, but it was also looked pretty bad and some of the mechanics were bad. And then Nane Guy took a couple months to uh, work through a new version, which is what you're watching here. Um, but yeah, we go up there because it avoids having to go to the right, and we can just demo through the spikes. But yeah, so this is the brand new one. It, I think it is a lot better, uh, just in terms of style and also, like, mechanics. It's also like 10 times harder than the old ones, so you know, pretty insane. Um, so as mentioned before, we're going to get a lot of boosts off these um, zip blocks, mainly because we can and that's the easiest way to save time. Uh, so here, doing this strat where we hit the spin, that's really precise. Like I can't, I think I spent like half an hour just trying to get into that hole properly so that we could avoid um, having to go over the top for the spin, so very difficult. Well. Yeah. Yeah, chapter nine may take a tiny bit of time. <laughs> yeah. I also heard um what was like the average completion time for this level? Oh casually? it's something like probably in the fifteen hours or something like yeah. that. So yeah. <laughs> this is a long one. This is really long. I think Ruby has a sub thirty minutes now as like kind of the best human time, but like, your first playthrough is going to take probably greater than 10 hours, so... Um, there's some cool strats here that I uh, recently added compared to the old version. Oh, and in this room, uh, thanks to uh, Uni, um, they found a cool skip you can do here, about to come up. Uh, it's actually a massive skip. Yeah. Where you can avoid going to the left and collecting all these fins, and you just kind of go up here, so really awesome. Dang. We also can avoid collecting the coins here, because we just kind of go past that spike block which you're meant to get out of the way. <laughs> but yeah, um... Just really quickly to explain that mechanic, it's basically extended jumps on spikes where you're moving away through the whole thing. Um, yeah. Okay, so we're now in uh, 1500 meters, uh, which is a huge amount of cycles. Uh, we're just going to kind of demo dash through as many of these walls as possible because that avoids having to actually, you know, wait for cycles and like go over the top and do those kind of things. This room is really awesome. I think like we're very close to death in a lot of ways, so. And yeah, this room, eh, we're just gonna kind of demo dash through most of this. Yeah, try this, Ruby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just just find the right pixel, they just dash. <laughs> just press the demo button. It's just yeah, easy. just press the demo button. You even have a bind for it, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, we have to do one neutral there, the rest we can do with the graveler's stamina thing. Oh, uh, this one, you need to use that block um, going up to give you just enough momentum to reach that crystal. It's very frustrating to do, uh, and pretty precise. Yeah, whenever those blocks are moving upwards, they actually, if you jump, you get a vertical boost. It's yeah. a little known fact. <laughs> this room's pretty fun, just uh, dash pretty much the entire way. And then we wait a tiny bit at the end. Is there blinding wind in this? I forget. Sorry? Uh, no, is wind there... blinding isn't. Yeah, no, the wind's oh, yeah. fine in this. This is uh, my least favorite room of the whole thing. It's also a giant auto scroller, in, like similar to the ones in, uh, what do you call it, uh, 4D. Uh, we're gonna, at the end here, we're gonna do some jumping on top of these blocks. Uh, that's mainly just for swag points, there's no real reason to do it. Uh, however, at the end, it does make sense. We get a hyper off it, uh, which lets us like skip through part of this section, so by doing that. Uh, this one's also really frustrating, a huge auto scroller using snowballs, so. Yeah, yeah we got away from snowballs a lot here. Yeah. I think this is the only part we can actually skip through bits.
And yeah, you, we do the same spike thing here. Oh, there's a bit you can just wait there for some reason. Um, mainly because then we can jump off here quicker than if we had to actually grab onto the side. Yeah, we uh, have to push this block around to block that on, shooting yeah. us up into the air, because it would just shoot us up on the spikes otherwise. Yep. And then that block we obviously had to move out to uh, make sure we could actually go up. Yeah, hey, otherwise temple. you like kind of soft lock. Yeah. You can <laughs> death warp, but you get stuck there. 250 is fun. Yeah, there's a lot of mechanics. I'm pretty sure there's some really cool skips you could do here that I wasn't able to find, but um, it's still a pretty fun section, just using the blocks everywhere. Uh, this is also very reminiscent of that one bit in uh, 5D. Yeah, I think the screen after this one. Oh, that one we have to wait for that block to get out of the way, unfortunately. Very sad. And so this screen, I think, is one of my favorite ones. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of those boosts. So we just did one there. Uh, we obviously did another one there. And we do a third one here. Okay, and this, I think, is the longest single screen in the entire section. Like, this is, like, absolutely batshit insane long. Um, Not counting the... Final screen. Oh, obviously, yeah. yeah, like I'm counting each flag as a separate thing, yeah. but like e it's even longer than the cassette room, I believe. So, just a lot of waiting for these things to get out of the way and a lot of things to go up. And also, a lot of false hope where you're like, yes, I did it, the noise sounded, and then nope, you got another section. Times of bubbles. <laughs> but we're not done yet. Oh, door skip! Oh my god! Oh, Chad. <laughs> I can't believe it did door skip. Oh my god, Insane how did we do test. that? Okay, so downwind, we're gonna be uh, standing on spikes actually a bit, so we do one there, mainly to actually get back our stamina. Because uh, we want to not have to do neutral jumps because they're really, really slow, especially in downwind. We also just do a spike there because it lets us hyper and stuff, so... Um, yeah, but otherwise, in downwind, it's very possible to stand on spikes, so we're going to do it a bunch. Uh, wind is broken. Yeah, wind is pretty broken in general, so... And otherwise, this is just a lot of really precise dashes to try and avoid having to do stuff. Cool. Uh, upwind is really frustrating because you just kind of float around rather than being on the ground a lot, but it's okay. Um, we'll, we'll make do somehow. You skipped that fly here, go back. <laughs> Not getting that bingo objective. Wait, you're skipping a lot of flags. What happens if you die? Uh, listen, it's a speed run, okay? You gotta do it. Uh, we do a hyper there, uh, and it's possible to line it up so you actually do a hyper and get extended hyper and get your dash back. We do that one here. Um, that just saves a bit of time moving around and obviously refreshes our stamina as well, which is kind of useful. Yeah, basically if those fat spikes placed on like the edges of walls, there's occasionally like a little gap that Madeline can stand on if she's crouching. So if you just demo hyper into it, you can be crouching on it and then jump off before you would slide into the spike. Yeah. Uh, feathers plus wind is literally the worst thing anyone ever invented, so, uh, yeah, really, really bad. I can't believe that like, it was in the original 70, and then Name Guy decided to also put in the new one, and it was kind of frustrating to see that, so. You hate to see it. Okay, so now this is the longest, uh, like, single screen. Uh, I really hope my game doesn't lag out here. It occasionally does. I think if I got it in full screen, so it should be fine, but... Um, yeah, this just goes on for a while. There's a lot of really long flags, um, and we kind of do a few skips, which is kind of nice. I'll try and point them out. Like, that was a huge skip, obviously. Uh, we're just going to demo through all these spikes because screw, you know, going up and down, just, like, go through. Um, a lot of these clap movements were really precise to make sure that I landed on them as soon as possible. So, basically... 
uh, like the jumps off the air are really precise so that I land, uh, I'm going down the same frame I'm on top so I'm able to like jump immediately or activate them immediately. Uh, we skip going to the left here by just doing some neutrals, that's actually human revival. We skip going up here by doing some neutrals, uh, that means we don't have to go to the right. Uh, I'm not actually sure if that's faster, I should actually investigate at some point, but it's still cool. Yeah, it looks faster, it's cool. Probably, yeah, yeah. Shoutouts to the 8 seat uh, strat where you get a reverse corner boost off the uh, top of that block. Or the left side of that block. Okay, so flag 2 is, I think a lot of people really hate it. It's basically 7C except like a hard version. Uh, again, we're just going to kind of demo through pretty much every single one of these obstacles. Uh, rather than actually doing it properly, but we still do some bits properly. Um, I'm... oh yeah, there is actually wing covers, yeah. Uh, we do the stamina-less climbs here to save some time, and then... Yeah, we're done. Uh, we get a tiny bit of speed here. It's a shame it is longer, unfortunately. Oh yeah, by the way, all that was flag 2. Like, oh we yeah. just <laughs> one, so... Whoa. That one's also pretty long, but it's less threatening, I guess, so... Cool, and now we enter the dreaded cassette room. So, it is tradition that the 7D cassette room is really hard and long, uh, which is pretty true here. We're also going to try and dash as much as possible when we're waiting to try and avoid, uh, save a few frames, so... That'll explain these weird dashes off these bounce blocks. And we get a boost off there to make that hyper work. Uh, this feather, uh, there's actually a pixel perfect gap you can go there, and you need to tilt the analog fin one off hovers uh, vertical so that you don't die to the spikes. Um, so it's a pretty cool trick. There's also you some invisible really blocks here, but yeah, we just know where they are, obviously. Yeah. You can actually use the light to kind of see where they are. Yeah, that's what it's you're meant to do casually. Use binocular. <laughs> oh my god, why- Oh, well, I guess, yeah, it's- You yeah, technically it lose his frame, so. Locked, but... Yeah. It and yeah, we just demo through that and grab the heart, and that's 7D. Uh, <laughs> 7 12- 12, 12 7. 7. Yeah. The one spot where there's binoculars is at the very, very end. <laughs> yeah. It's so you can see, like, one puzzle. Okay, so we're up to 8C, 8D. 8D is one of, like, my favorite now. Um, me yeah, and Fish it, optimize this a lot, and it's really awesome now. Uh, Nega, almost nutty. Every single screen is just yeah. ridiculous now. Nega also put in this heart barrier and requires you to get it rather than just retrying, which costs us about 4 seconds. Despite that, I think we saved about uh, 30 seconds off the old task, so... Yeah. But yeah, basically every screen is nutty, uh, as Fish said, so... Oh yeah, we're also going to be uh, jumping on lava a lot here. It's actually one of the main mechanics or gimmicks of this spin. Uh, obviously as a task we can do it a bit more than usual. Uh, do you want to explain uh, bounce blocks hypers, by the way, Fish? The core block hypers? Yeah. Yeah, whenever you're on the edge of a, um, one of the core blocks, the fire virgins, um, whenever they're pushing you, you actually get put into coyote frames towards the end of it breaking. And you can just do a hyper out of that. So it's basically like a dream hyper just on a core block, and it breaks a ton of puzzles. It actually, uh, 8B, yeah, 8B, the task for that got super broken because of core block hypers. Yeah, so we obviously use it a bit of things to, like, kind of gain a bunch of speed and use it a bit of places. Yeah, it's way faster than just, like, jumping off of the block. It yeah. gives you, like, ridiculous amount of speed. So, like, for example, here we're going to do one which lets us, like, skip having to go over that bit there. And here we get a huge amount of speed. That's actually not a core block hyper. Um, that's uh, <laughs> kind of hard to explain, but basically we do similar to the boosted uh, wall bounce before, except we're actually doing uh, right jumps off one of the blocks that was uh, disappearing. Uh, and each time we did that, we got the boost of the block again. So we're able to do that four times, then dash, and that lets us basically do that. We actually, yeah, we save a dash here because it's way faster to climb using the dash and then to just dash across that horizontal gap. Yeah. Uh, this room is just... takes basically all the mechanics of the game and redoes them. Um, 
We also can skip getting the keys because we can just kind of hyper uh, demo through this gap here instead of having to go up for it. Another cool block hyper. Yeah, that screen looks a little bit slow, but we have to wait a super long time for that block to reappear. So we have to kind of wait around for a second. Yeah. So, uh, I guess, yeah. In this screen, there's a feather at the end. I don't know what I was thinking when I originally tasked this, because this way is, like, really easy and basically saves a huge amount of time, like several seconds. So, uh, we kind of just go under that core switch there, which lets us avoid hitting it. Um, and did you know there's berries in this chapter? Like, who do? Uh, and yeah, this space section is just kind of slow, unfortunately. Like, it's still got good core mechanics going, so we can't really save any time by dashing. Uh, we pick up speed towards the end by just doing hypers. Also, shoutouts to getting rid of that death warp. Now we have a perfect record. Uh, we also, there's more to the right, but we kind of just avoid it by demoing through that gap. And that's and GG! That's GG. 34, 36. Yeah. That's all decent. Okay, GG. GG. <laughs> GG. <laughs> so just going to get up the journal really quickly. Yeah, so... Again, huge shout outs to uh, Fish and Uni for obviously making, uh, helping make this. And obviously, uh, Name Guy, thank you very much for making these. These are really good levels. Uh, definitely, I would say the best uh, Celeste custom levels uh, been made so far. I really enjoy running them. And also, a couple shout outs to Ruby for finding a few strats. And I think Rich Connor as well found a few strats. So. Uh, if I left out anyone, thank you for helping point stuff out as well. So, shout out to Archie. Shout out to Archie, of course. So, 